The first minute of this story needs to hit with the weight it deserves, because this old battlefield trick remains one of the most underrated and reliable off-grid power sources ever designed. During the Second World War, entire units found themselves cut off from supply lines for days at a time. Radios died, field lamps dimmed, and batteries froze or corroded long before help arrived. When everything electric failed, soldiers didn't wait around for logistics to save them. They turned to the one machine in camp that still worked without fuel, without wiring crews, and without spare batteries, the ordinary military bicycle. With a few pieces of wire, a scavenged dynamo, and the kind of mechanical improvisation born only in desperate conditions, they created a generator that could power communication gear long enough to send life-saving messages across the front. That wartime ingenuity didn't fade either. The same principles work flawlessly today and any prepper who overlooks them is leaving a dependable energy source sitting in their garage gathering dust. The reason soldiers turned bicycles into generators was simple necessity backed by real engineering. Military bicycles of the era often carried hub dynamos or side-mounted bottle dynamos designed to power small headlamps. These units produced modest but steady current as long as the wheel kept turning. Soldiers quickly realised that a wheel didn't care whether it spun under a rider's weight or the force of a hand crank or elevated pedal. As long as rotational speed stayed consistent, the dynamo pushed electrons the same way it did on a night patrol. This gave soldiers a controllable, human-powered energy source at a time when alkaline and lead-acid batteries were expensive, unreliable and extremely sensitive to cold. A trained operator could sit and crank while a radio operator tuned the set, making bike generators a lifeline for recon squads, partisans and resistance movements throughout Europe and Asia. The core principle behind a bicycle generator remains the same and is easy to replicate today. Modern bicycle components actually make the process even more efficient. A standard bike wheel fitted with a hub dynamo can output anywhere between 6 and 12 volts, depending on the model and speed. Most dynamos are designed around alternating current output which means you route the leads into a rectifier to produce stable direct current power. From there, the current passes into a charge controller and onward to whatever device or battery you intend to run. When you build this system today, you're working with equipment more precise and efficient than anything Second World War soldiers had access to. A high-quality hub dynamo paired with a simple rectifier and USB regulator can easily provide enough power to charge. Media Group Hub Dynamo with rectifier and USB regulator laid out on table. USB devices charging from bicycle generator set up a stock distribute equally radios, phones, LED lamps and power banks. You're essentially turning calories into volts with minimal energy loss and no dependency on the grid. The steps needed to rebuild this Second World War generator using common bike parts are straightforward. Start with a wheel that has a built-in dynamo. If yours doesn't, a bottle dynamo mounted against the tyre will still do the job, though it will run slightly less efficiently and produce more friction. Elevate the rear wheel of the bicycle by mounting it onto a simple stand. Many preppers use a steel bike repair stand or even two blocks of wood securely braced under the axle. The key requirement is stability because any wobble makes the generator inconsistent. Once elevated, connect the dynamo's leads to a rectifier. A small bridge rectifier rated for at least one amp at 50 volts is more than sufficient. 
From your rectifier, run the output into a direct current regulator, step-down converter, or charge controller, depending on what you intend to power. Finally, test your system by pedaling at a steady cadence. You should see your voltage hold within the working range of your device. If you want a hand crank set up instead, remove the wheel from the frame entirely, fix it on a small axle stand, and attach a handle or short crank arm to the hub so the generator can be operated while sitting. Testing wattage output is essential because it tells you what this generator is realistically capable of in the field. Most modern dynamos deliver between 3 and 12 watts, depending on rotation speed. That might sound small, but honestly, sustained mechanical power from a human source adds up quickly. A steady peddler can generate enough energy to charge a handheld radio in under an hour, or top off a power bank in a couple of hours. In World War II, the exact wattage didn't matter as much as reliability. A radio only needed enough current to send a burst transmission, and bike generators supplied that without fail. Today, you can take this much further. For example, pairing the bike generator with a small lithium-iron phosphate battery, Life PO4 as it's known, acts as a buffer, letting you store energy during downtime and release it to devices that demand more wattage than the generator produces at any moment. This turns your setup into a legitimate micro-power station that functions during outages, camping trips, remote research, or any scenario where grid failure becomes a long-term concern. This old method has practical modern uses that make it invaluable for preppers and historians alike. If you're running a field camp for a living history event, this generator can power authentic lamps and period radios without bringing in noisy generators. In a survival setting, it keeps communication gear operational when storms or blackouts knock power out for days. During long expeditions, it ensures your navigation tools stay functional without burning through batteries. Some homesteaders even use bike generators as part of a daily routine, charging power banks while exercising on a stationary stand. That kind of dual-purpose utility is really the essence of World War II field engineering, where nothing could afford to serve only one role. The legacy of the World War II bicycle generator still matters, because it proves that simple mechanics outperform complicated systems when the stakes are high. It's one of the rare wartime technologies that works just as well today as it did 80 years ago, and in many ways, even better. It doesn't require fuel, it doesn't depend on the weather, and it doesn't fail when electronics get wet or cold. It rewards physical effort directly with reliable power output something every prepper should appreciate. If you understand how the soldiers of that era solved their energy problems with nothing more than steel, wire and determination, you gain a piece of practical knowledge you can use whenever modern systems fall apart. If you found this guide valuable and want more historical deep dives with real survival application, make sure you subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone who appreciates the kind of knowledge that never stops working.